think what that does. Yeah, that's not bad. That's better. Hello, it's good to be back with you. Hello, Tony, is that about right? Yes, I think that's absolutely yep. perfect. Right, You've got okay. both the dark colours and oh. the light. Gabrielle and I are back with a new series of Heartbeat, ten new programmes with lots of different ideas for you in this series. And the theme of this first one is... In the forest. Which is why we are printing a forest. And we are actually printing this forest. Have a look at this. Can you see it's a piece of polystyrene and it's been cut with little holes in the middle there and that's to give us a good texture for the bark I'm about to print on this tree. And you can see the paint is all not quite mixed up properly so we've got lots of different colours there and let's have a go at that see how it prints do you think tony Is that all right yeah scatter them about right, like okay. anything you know right yes that works extremely what about, well i think we need a tree about here instant trees slightly smaller this one start very gently and then harder as it goes down right. of course your tree over that side is absolutely dry, but this one is not nearly so dry. So it's darker, you see, in the colour. I think, hopefully, this might print us a few more leaves over here. It would be rather nice to have there and there, and perhaps just... Oh, I know, another one is high up, then we shan't have to go up to the top again. That's it. Oh, that looks nice, Gabby. Well, as you can see, this forest is sort of stylized. That means it's not exactly realistic, but uh, you know what it's meant to be, a sort of impression. And I now want to do an impression of something that we might find in a forest, but this time it's going to be drawn in far greater detail. I'm using a pastel pencil just to outline what I want to use a real thick pastel on. And I'm making those little circular areas to help me because I'm going to put a much lighter colour into those, which might give you a clue as to what this is going to be. A back black or dark coloured background is very good for the pastel. It shows up the colours remarkably well. Now, that's fine for that. I don't think we need all of that one. And now, with a very light white, I can make those little spots really glow out of the red. Like that. And here, I can put some texture, because that's the underside of this item. I can also delineate, that means make a line to show what this is going to be. And now use a, a rather darker, it's not white, this is the very softest sort of brownish colour but it looks incredibly bright. This, of course, is drawing with pastel pencils and pastel. And I can put shadow there and there, which gives us an idea of what it actually looks like. And down here, make the area look a bit mucked about, because it always is where fungus grows and get dark patches. And we would have grass, which does two things. It makes a nicer picture, and it also gives us some scale gives us an idea that this is really quite a large toadstool. It's called fly agaric, or agaric. I never know how you pronounce it. What I do know is it's supposed to be poisonous, and although it's marvellous for fairy stories, gnomes sitting on and things like that, watch it if you're in the forest and see it. Now, here's a nice colour for grasses, you know, when they're 
coming up to the seeds dropping off them. And we're nearly there. I think just to, just to really make this lovely, we want a little light coming through the background of the forest. So just little touches of yellow and green, like that. And with cotton wool, we will diffuse those colors and give us that feeling of light coming through the background. There we are. I think we'll leave it at that. I thought it would be nice to try and make a tiger to go into the forest and I want to make a life-size one but to work out the idea I've made it small first. Have a look at this book you can see where I got the reference from there's a photograph lovely photograph of a tiger here and can you see the shape of the body it's a lovely curve there and the head and the legs and that I've tried to simplify onto this piece of card body head and legs there and if you have a look you can see I've drawn lines up and down where I want to cut slots to fix the pieces together. And one note, have a look at the legs, they're drawn along the bottom edge of the paper so that when they stand up, they'll stand flat to the table and actually balance the tiger, hopefully. Right, there are my pieces and I've cut them out over here and you can see I've painted the card orange and let's see if it slots together. Half a slot, halfway up into the body and halfway down into the leg yes that fixes on and the next one yep and you see you've got those flat underneath feet there that make him stand have a little look at the front i've left a little button shape there which is the nose and a little slot on top and the face goes on there and that little button shape becomes his nose and that's a good time to turn him around and put the face on because you get this sort of three-dimensional face. Put it on very, very quickly just with a pen. We'll add to it later with some paint, but just to give you an idea. That's his nose. And there, that'll do just for now, just to make it very obvious what's going on. Right, now the best bit of the tiger is the stripes. And I'm going to print the stripes the same way as we were printing the bark earlier, with pieces of polystyrene. And I've cut some tiny bits out, and have a look at them. Again, just slivers of polystyrene cut in, this time to a curve, and that should print the stripes on the back of the tiger. Let's have a go. Yeah, that's great. The wonderful thing about this sort of printing is it actually doesn't matter how messy it gets, because the messier it gets, the more the stripes look like fur. Let's put that in under there. Try and follow the contours of the body if you do this. Bit of orange, I think, just to blend in. There we are. And it's quite nice if the paint is very thick because it takes longer to dry, but you get that lovely feeling of movement running through it. And you can see that's starting to look like animal fur. One last thing, at the bottom, a little bit of white, because if you have a look at the reference photograph, there's a little bit of white going on underneath there. There we go. And of course you need to do both sides, both sets of legs, and the head. And the head, if you have a look at this head here, you can see that it's made up exactly the same way, but the slivers of polystyrene and much smaller. I've just cut some very tiny ones out there and printed that on. So that's what he'll look like. Move that out of the way and show you the finished tiger there. Let's put his face on. There we go. But he's a bit small to go in the forest, so what I've actually done 
is made a huge tiger. There's one head and here's the head to my big tiger. Tony's putting the body together over in the forest. How's it going, Tony? Tail end seems to be fine. Great. Right, let's get the head on. What do you think? Slotted to perfection. <laughs> right, but I actually don't want him over here. Can you help me move him? Yep. Slightly over to the side. Go away. Yep, that's where Oh, I'm now I know why you want it in here. Camouflage. Right. Oh. You've seen the part of our studio forest, but now we're in the real thing. I thought it'd be rather fun to try and find things from a forest that we could make, make into something. And it looks to me as though what we're going to make it of is dead wood, because, of course, we mustn't cut anything down or anything like that. Gabrielle seems to have collected something already. How are you yes. doing? What about, do you think, I was wondering if we could use this whole mound. It looks like some extraordinary animal, the mound. Yeah, no, but I was thinking about using it as... A base for something else. Oh, I see. A sort of yeah. plinth with right. the thing on the top, right? And what about what? legs? Legs is good because that, of course, is exactly like the hind leg of a deer, isn't it? And what about scratch them in? I would never stay in there. Will it? Well, it may do. Make more. We could wire tie it with something it. or yeah. other. Really needs now a couple of straight ones to this end, and then perhaps we could Front put legs something across. across. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Yes. Would be ideal. Maybe a bit too long, but we could... I think that's about all we could do for it. A magnificent beast, I thought. It's great. I don't know what the place is it is. <laughs> <laughs> there is one thing I do know. <laughs> Whatever it is, I think we should leave it here in the forest. Right. <laughs> Great, aren't they? It's yes. so difficult to choose them. It's such a high standard. True enough. 
Well, thank you for sending in all your work. I wish we could choose them all. Anyway, let's see what we have chosen. I love the way this tree has been made up with lots of tiny little lines, and the purple colour running through it is fantastic. That's great illustration. Yeah. And this is a highly original and very skillful technique. Now this one's been done like scraper board, scratching through to reveal the foil underneath. Very That's strong. it, yes. Yes, um, paper wrapped tight is making that very pleasant texture. It's of the colours. <laughs> yes. Well, he could go now forest, couldn't he? He certainly do. Mm -hmm. I think he's a mask because his nose is cut, you see. You can put your own nose behind that. This is lovely. Another scraper board effect? Yes, it certainly is. Again on foil, but I suspect that marker ink has been put yeah. in there, giving those beautiful colours. Oh, we can see their parrots. It's beautiful blue. Oh, another printing technique. This is slightly different. How's this one done? Usually we get this effect. Two sheets of glass, paint in between, press, pull them apart, and you get that sort of effect, which can then be transferred to paper. Very lively. Very. I guess wire with green paper wrapped around it as a sort of armature of the wire so we get this wonderful tree effect and it's all embedded into modeling clay tree mania extremely good line drawing here and what activity in it and what a character in the tree and uh, what a good selection of art for the start of our series. Good variety of materials, I think, too, Tony. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And here's the address if you want to send us some work. Heartbeat, BBC Television, London, W3-6XZ. And as always, we'll give you that address again at the end of the programme. <laughs> Morph, you really will have to think of something to do with all those pencils. Now, the forest is looking pretty good, but I think it needs a spot of colour down in that corner. You remember the toadstool I drew with the pastels? Well, for a stage set like this, we can do something much, much more simple to great effect. That's one bit. Then we want a piece of grey paper, that's because that, and a little bit like this, which we can put a spot there and a spot there, put that on that, 
just a bit of white chalk to put some whiteness into it there. Then we can put the top on. And now the really simple bit is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there we are. So I think we'll plant it in the depths of the forest. Just about here. That's it. Most effective. Hello, Gabby. Down uh, your logs. Yeah, just about finished. But Tony, I think there's mm. something I should tell you. What? They're not logs, you know. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Well, it's pretty effective, isn't it? I think we're just about there. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it was all just done from simple printing blocks, would you? No. Lovely. I like it all. Possible exception of your crossing. <laughs> My gosh, I've been clawed. Clawed by a mouse. They're incredibly easy to make. Really simple, aren't they, Tony? They certainly one? are. Let me show you. Let's have a look. Let's Let me show you. Tiger mask. What you really need to know are just three things. The position of the eyes. If you put two fingers like that where your eyes are and then put them to the card that you're going to cut, you can make a mark and then you'll get the place where to just cut out the eyes and they'll be in the right place. The other thing is, so that your nose doesn't get squashed, is to cut the nose bit so that it pushes forward like that. And the last thing is where to put the elastic. It goes from one side there to the other. And of course, it goes around the back. And then you can put it on and be very fierce indeed. <laughs> and that, I'm afraid, is all the time we have for today. Maggot moments, old Mervyn hasn't got anything on the sticky.